Motoring journalists are often asked to compare cars so that buyers can make the most informed decision. Unfortunately, sometimes that question is not really what they want to ask. What I mean to say is what they really want to ask is, what car should I buy for myself? To be clear, I'm not suggesting that this process is for everybody, for all buyers. I mean, we do have viewers out there who have a household, two registered licenses, and possibly 10 cars between them. I'm happy for you. You guys buy whatever it is that you want. <laughs> I got no problem with that. But this is for us, say, mere mortals to follow. It just makes the process a lot easier so that you can get to your car that much faster. Now, to make every peso on your purchase count, let's start with the body type, which essentially will dictate what it is that you can do with your car or what it is that your car can do for you. You don't necessarily get yourself a subcompact if you're gonna be hauling items or a sedan if you're gonna be six or more, right? Unless you get one of those cars from the circus. In total, you can actually fit 7.25% less clowns in a standard size vehicle compared to normal size non-clown people. Man, I gotta get one of those. Shut up, Earl! There are various subcategories, but using Autodeal's platform will yield you from the tiniest of hatchbacks to the largest of vans. This is where the process should begin. To figure out if the ride is just yours with a plus one, or is it a plus four to six, or possibly even double digits. Some questions I will never forget. What should I buy, an Ortiga or a Vios? Oh, kind of far. Then I was asked, should I get a Terra or a Navara? At least that's a little bit closer. But what I'm trying to get at is my response to these questions was a question of my own, which was, for what? See, ask yourself that question, answer it, and then you've got step one in the bag. Next, equally as important is what's under the hood. Your car needs to pack enough motor to get the job done. Now, manufacturers have started leaning towards more efficient yet smaller engines that can do the same amount of work and get the job done, which is great, but do be careful. Apart from the additional weight and work you expect from your automobile, add to your consideration that a car can be too big to handle reasonably or too heavy to power itself. And when I say big, I don't necessarily mean a large SUV. Even a mini compact can be a large car to an engine that just can't cut it for the work that you expect it to do. And besides, there is no such thing as too much power. Yeah, okay, maybe there is. Third is pricing, which is actually relative. See, expensive to most might actually be affordable to some, and to the very few, affordable is basically half a drop in the bucket. Like Jeff Bezos. Man, that dude is loaded. That guy is so rich that if he saw $100 on the street, it wouldn't be worth his time to pick it up. That's how loaded that guy is. He's so loaded that he doesn't have cars. He's got a G650. Have you seen the dude's house? Wait, what were we talking about? Price, yes, okay, back to the topic. So, I can sugarcoat it all you want, or tell you what, we can rip it off like uh... oh, you. If you can afford a new car, great, congratulations. That is no small feat. But don't go trying to kill yourself to pay off a car, or perhaps bring your credit rating down so low that even molds use it as toilet paper. Not good. You don't really want to look at your kids and say, guess what's for dinner? Your hopes and dreams. Now go to bed. Dude, that was so mean. Which is why I never say it to my kids, man. Basically what I'm saying is don't let your ego write checks that your body can't cash. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Wow. Either I'm really old or I'm just really excited for the movie to come out in December. Or both. Now, there are also other aspects to consider, like parts and availability, tech and safety, fuel efficiency, you know, all of those other things. But these first three steps could be the biggest hurdle that you can overcome in getting yourself closer to that car and answering the question, which one should I get? There is also one very large monkey that people carry on their backs that unfortunately makes its presence felt when buying a car, which is want over need. For instance, I want an MX-5 RF that has absolutely zero attributes that I need in my personal life other than the fact that it's really, really pretty and I want one. Seriously. In, like, machine grade. Just like coming polymetal now. No. Seriously? Serious. Ooh, the blue one. Pretty. Versus a diesel seven-seater SUV. 
because it ticks all the boxes. See what I mean? Speaking of ticking boxes, do please like and subscribe our YouTube channel because like I say, we always love making our videos just for you. Believe it or not, buying an automobile can become a hassle if you allow it to. So don't let it because it shouldn't. It should be a fulfilling experience. One that these three simple steps and autodeal.com.ph can provide for you. Folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you soon.